Second Thessalonians, uh, second chapter. And we're going to start the 10th verse. It says, With all deceivableness and unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe in lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now what does that say? That's strong. He says he's going to send strong delusion down upon people. Why? Because they didn't believe the truth that God said. Because they received not the love of the truth. And that they might be saved. You're saved by the love of God. You're saved by the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one else can save you. Buddha can't do it. Allah can't do it. It takes Jesus Christ. The Bible says there is no other name given. Where we might be saved. He's the only one. He's the only way we can be saved. And like I preached yesterday in my message, um, there's so many people have been turned over to a reprobate mind. And God is allowing them to do whatever they want to do because they choose. You choose every day what you want to do. You want to be a dope addict? God will let you if that's what you want. You want to be an adulterer? Hey, you can be the best you want to be. God will let you. But there's coming a time when judgment is going to come. So many people are getting Alzheimer's and, and dementia and all kinds of things. And you know, it's getting more rampant today than ever before because people are forgetting who's in control. People are forgetting that God has the control. He is the one who is going to keep us from having these things. You know, we have to trust God. The devil said, oh, you're getting sick, you're getting this, you're getting that. Hey, the devil can get anything he wants to, but I'm not listening to him. Okay? When he tells me something's wrong, I, I can take him to the Word of God and I show him what the Word says. But most people can't take him to the Word of God and tell him uh, and rebuke him through the Word of God because they don't know the Word of God. They don't spend no time reading the Word. They don't spend no time searching the Scriptures. The Bible says, search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Hey, from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, they talked about Jesus Christ. He's our Redeemer. He's the one who saved us. And He cares for us. And if we live for Him, we're going to be all right. If you don't live for Him, then you've got a big problem. Because the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy, and he wants to destroy you. Now, this is in uh, Romans, the first chapter, 26 verse. It says, For this cause God gave them up into affection, into vile affection. Ooh, that's rough. For even their women did change the natural use to that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their own lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their errors, which was meet. In other words, was doing. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, People don't want to retain God in knowledge. They don't, they don't even want him in there. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. People are being turned over, my friend, to uncleanliness, to ungodliness. And demons are coming out of the pits of hell and taking people over. Now, I just got to reading to you that all these people are going to be turned over to a reprobate mind. All these people, unless they repent of their sins, are going to hell. 
That's what the Bible says. That's not Gilbert Gerald. That's the Word of God says it. You can't go to heaven like that. You know, he says, if you don't want to retain God in your knowledge, God rejects you and turns you over to a reprobate mind and hardness of heart because people don't, aren't humble themselves. People don't humble themselves and listen to God. Hey, people don't listen to anybody anymore. It's what they want, and if what they want don't match what, you know, the gospel says, and that's tough. They just go their way, you know? If the gospel interferes with them getting a boat and going out and fishing on Sunday, then uh, so be it. They don't go to church. You know, the money, they get a lot of money coming in, they got things to money to burn, they go burn it. They don't give anything to God. I've had people say right in this church, hey, hey, if I get this money, I've got some money coming. If I get it, I'm going to bless the church. Hey, when they got their money, they didn't come back to church. I've never seen them again. <laughs> but you know what? I don't need their money. I've got something that's worth more than money. My riches are in heaven. My riches is in what God has done for me in my life. I'm happy. I've got joy in my life. I know I've been crying. I've been crying because I, I feel so sorry for the world. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to have peace. And don't worry what people say. People will run you down. People will say, oh, you shouldn't preach that stuff because, you know, you, you're uh, anti this, you're anti that. But hey, I preach what the Word says. The Word said it. I believe it. And therefore, it's going to be dangerous if you don't. Let me, let me show you something here. This is in Leviticus. And it's the 18th chapter, starting at the 22nd verse. It says, Then shall, it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abominable. It's what? Abominable. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. And it goes on to say that anybody that does... are to be slain. Now, God don't come down and slay you now because of mercy. Go back under the law and you'd be dead. But we're not living under the law. We're living under something called grace. And through grace, you can do anything you want to do. You know? You can go anywhere you want to go. You can sin any way you want to sin. But the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Because God will find you out. He knows who you are. He knows where you're at. And there's a time coming that you're gonna that you're gonna be turned over to a reprobate mind. You're not gonna be able to remember your own name. You're not gonna be able to remember anything that's going on. Because God's gonna turn you over if you don't turn him on. We need to turn God on. And turn the devil off. Because the devil has nothing but destruction. All he wants to do is kill you. That's what it says in John 10.10. 10. It says, A thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's why he came. He wants to destroy you. He don't want you to have life. But that's what Jesus can do. He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. There's an allegory there. There's a, there's a life more abundantly, or there's a kill, steal, and to destroy. Which one will you have? The devil come to kill, steal, and to destroy you. The devil is control of the flesh. He wants to. He wants you to operate off the flesh with adultery, fornication, and all these bad things. Read uh, Galatians 5, 19 on through. You know, he come to give you all those things. And once you start filling your life with those things, he comes along and destroys you. Because that's what he came to do. He's doing pretty good. He's doing his job. He's killing people by the millions. And send them to hell. He said, oh, preacher, I don't believe in hell. Well, you can't. You could not believe it at all. It's not going to hurt me any. But the truth is the truth. And there is more in the Bible about hell 
than than there is about heaven. You match them up, and there's more about hell than there is about heaven. But you believe in heaven. Everybody wants to believe in heaven. You know why? Because it's so wonderful. Everybody likes the thought of utopia. Everybody likes the thought of having everything just wonderful. And that's what heaven is. But in order to get there, you have to do something. You don't have to, you know, to do the sacrifice. God already done that. He already laid the price down. He, he said, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And all we have to do is receive Him. First chapter of uh, St. John 12, verse says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. I don't want, uh, I don't want to be turned over to a reprobate mind. No, I want to, I want to ride mine as long as I live. I want to be able to think right. Wouldn't it be horrifying not to be able to think right? Be doing this and that and not even know you're doing it? That's terrible. But that's what's happening to people, my friend. It's what's happening to people because they forget God. This scripture is in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter day times, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Can you imagine that? having their conscience seared. Why? Because they yield over to these spirits. These spirits are seducing spirits. And there's doctrines of devil out there. And they're disguised as something beautiful. They're disguised as a kingdom doctrine. That, you know, you go in there and everybody's all uh, good and everything. And everybody is really doing uh, riches and diamonds on their hand and all these things, and they think that's what it takes. They think that's where the riches are, but the riches aren't there. That's a false doctrine, you know? They don't even, they, they think that we're gonna be little Jesuses. We're gonna be little gods, and we're gonna take over the world and everything. But hey, there's some torture coming. There's some persecution coming. There's some persecution and uh, torture's already been around the world. If you've ever read anything about communism, if you've ever read any books from people who've been right in the middle of communism, you know what this torture can be like. And if you want to read a little bit of it, read the Harlan Poplar's book called uh, From uh, Torture for His Faith. And that's a book that'll show you exactly what it, what it means to live in communism, which is very, very close to coming here in America. If we don't stand flat-footed on the truth. If we don't do what God wants us to do, you know, we don't get to pray and hard. These demons are trying to control this government. And I want you to know that God has the Bible says so pray for those that's in rule over us. And that's a government. We need to pray for them. We need to honor and respect them. We need to respect our president. And instead of downing, they talk about this man like a low life sheep killing dog. But he's done nothing but good for this country. And people need to honor him as the president. Then you need to honor your pastor as the pastor of your church. You know, people, everybody thinks they can do better than the pastor. Everybody knows different. Everybody knows this and everybody knows. But I want you to know that whoever God puts in authority, that's who you need to respect. That's who you need to back. You need to get behind them. If your church is preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified, if they're telling you how to get to heaven, it's through Jesus Christ our Lord, you need to back them. You need to get behind them and support them. Because they're living in the last days. We don't have long. It's getting ready to wrap up, my friend. I'm talking about the rapture and the church is getting ready to take place. After that, I don't care what they do. After the rapture is gone, I'm not going to be here. When the rapture of the church takes place, they're going to have the whole world. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. The Bible says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth 
that Jesus is the Son of God. We need to believe that He is the Son of God. Without Him, you can't make it. But there's something you have to do. Make an 18-inch drop to your mind to your heart and say, Lord, I'm nothing without you. I need you. I want you. And when you start talking like that to God, He'll give you something you never thought possible. He'll put a love down inside you. He'll put a joy like you've never known. He'll put a desire to live. Most people don't even have a desire to live. That's why they get all hooked up on dope, alcohol, and, and all these things. They don't have a desire to live. They, they want to forget about their problems. They want to forget about the way things are. But when you've got Jesus Christ on board, it don't matter if all hell breaks loose. If it looks like the whole world's turning up on, on its end on you, it's not going to bother you. You look at it and laugh because God is in your life. Because you got what? You got Jesus. Well, I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. Let the world fall around me. I don't care. I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. And every time that I call him, he is there. If you've got Jesus Christ on board, <laughs> It's different. The every day of your life is an excited new era of life. Because you believe and you trust that God's going to do something. God's going to change things. He'll take the bad out and make it good. If you believe. If you believe, you shall receive. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And that's why uh, on Friday nights here, 7 o'clock, we're going to start a prayer meeting. This Friday night, we're going to be here, and we're going to uh, have prayer. Nothing but prayer. I won't be preaching. I won't be running my mouth. It's just going to be prayer, and everybody's going to pray. We'll have soft music playing. Everybody will pray at the altar, and uh, when they get through praying their needs, then we'll all gather together, and uh, individual needs we're going to be praying for. That's what we need. We need prayer. We need to join together in one line and one accord. If we don't get prayer in our life, we're going to fall. Those who are Christians are going to fall because the Bible says, because of thou art lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. It's time to get on fire for God. It's time to get the Holy Ghost in our life and be free. Be free. Be free from what? Be free from sin. Be free from what the devil's tall and telling you. You know, when you sin, the Bible says have an advocate with the Father. If you do fail, ask God to forgive you. But the devil wants to destroy you. He'll put sin, sinful thoughts in your mind, and you'll do them, and then he'll condemn you for it. He'll stand right on your shoulder and tell you what a dirty, rotten lowdown you are. And he's the one who made you do it. He's the one influenced you to do it, but yet he's condemning you when he's the one brought it on. So what do you do? You bow your head and say, Lord, I'm sorry I said this. I'm sorry I did this. I repent. And God will turn it all around. Then the devil can huff. He can puff. He can can't blow your house down. He can say anything he wants to say, and it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to harm you. You know why? Because Jesus took care of it all. He took care of every heartache, every pain. And all we gotta do, all we have to do is keep going back to him. Keep going back. Don't let the devil run you out away from him. Where else is there to go? The disciples, Jesus told me something that was hard for him to receive. And he had 70 disciples at one time. And once he said this about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, they, they couldn't visualize taking communion, you know. And uh, Jesus told him, he said, the things that I speak to you are spiritual. And he said, my words are spirit. And my words are life. But they all left him. He looked around, there wasn't nobody there but the twelve. The faithful twelve was there. And one of them was a traitor. <laughs> and he knew it. He knew all along who the traitor was. But he loved him just the same as all the rest of them. Isn't that wonderful? He knows how you are and he still loves you. And following we're yet sinners. 
while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can you imagine that? Even though he knew how bad we were. He knew how bad I was. But he looked down with mercy and saved me. Opened up my eyes and my heart. But here he is looking at, uh, at these 12 people. And he said, will you also leave me? Will you also go away? Peter spoke up and he said, Lord, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? We believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of Almighty God, and that you have the words of life. Where else can we go and find that? I said, no, we're not going nowhere. We're here. You're stuck with me. That's the way I feel. I feel like, God, you're stuck with me. I am here, and I'm going to stand for you no matter what. I am going to stand for you. No matter what demons in hell try to come against me, I know that you're going to take care of it. Turn it all over to him, my friend, because without him, you can't make it. Please. Please let him do something. Don't let the devil destroy you. God bless you.